Hello. Today we're going to be talking about datums and datum feature references in GD&T. So let's start with the objectives. Um, number one is to find the difference between a theoretical datum and a datum feature. Number two, explain how simulated datums are established. And number three, explain how to create a datum reference frame through references made in a feature control frame. Number four, I utilize all methods for identifying datum features, including the use of target points, lines, and areas. Uh, number five, make datum feature references in a feature control frame using the correct order of precedence. Number six, explain how a datum reference frame may be simulated when three mutually perpendicular surfaces are identified and referenced as datum features. Number seven, use material boundary modifiers on a datum feature references and explain the significance of those modifiers. Number eight, identify the degrees of freedom constrained by each reference datum feature in a datum reference frame. And then we're going to talk about our terms here. Um, you should have your objectives in front of you when you're going through this presentation. And make sure you make note of these terms that came up. Um, datum usage. What is the purpose of datums? Um, geometric tolerance specifications can be used to define re relationships between part features. Um, and relationships between part features would include positional tolerances, orientation tolerances, profile tolerances, and positional tolerances. And, and that's what datums are for. Um, they, they, they are used to define these, these uh, features, and, and so you can reference those in, in um, geometric dimensioning um, tolerance blocks. So that's what we use datum for, datums for. Um, datum terminology and application. This is kind of important right here. I'm trying to stick to just the key definitions, but datum feature references. Okay, so datum feature references. Those are the letters that are shown in a feature control frame that establish the datum reference frame. Okay, it's right here. Datum feature references. So here's a feature control frame. It's a positional tolerance, and here are the applicable datums. Um, what's a datum feature? Now, a datum feature is on the actual part. Those are the physical features on the actual part. They're physical, they can be touched. Um, you can't put datums on center lines or center planes because they are theoretical and not a datum feature, so they cannot be touched. Um, now, what is a datum? A datum is a theoretically perfect point, line or plane. They are located by the physical datum features that are identified on the drawing. Okay, so datum feature is what's identified on the drawing. I mean, a datum is what's identified on the drawing. A datum feature is the actual corresponding feature on an actual part. It can be touched. And datum feature references are these letters that show up in the feature control frame to reference a datum. Um, datum definitions. Center lines and center planes cannot be a datum. A datum feature is a physical and it can be touched. Okay, you cannot touch a center line or a center plane. Okay, so what we have here, we have these datum features identified. We have datum A here, it's a feature of size, it's a cylindrical feature. We have datum B here, it's identified, it's another cylindrical feature. And then we have a runout tolerance of 15 thousandths to those um, datums that are established by these two features. So these datum features, they're physical, they're on a part, they can't be touched. Um, and then over here, you know, we're trying to show this, eh, well, you know, if we put a datum on a center line, we can't touch a center line, so that's that's wrong. You cannot touch a center line or a center plane, so that is, by definition, that is wrong, putting a datum on a center line. Um, datum feature simulation, we're going to talk about this a lot. You know, in, in, in this chapter, in the chapters going forward. Okay, so so in this case, we've got a datum feature simulator. It's a theoretically perfect simulator that corresponds to the shape of the datum feature on the part. Um, so, for instance, it, it's, a, it's a plane, for instance. Okay, so what we have here is we have a part, and we have this theoretical datum plane A on the part. It's imperfect. It touches just the high points. And then what they're calling a true geometric count counterpart, that, that shows up on your, um, in your textbook. But really all that means is a plane 
that um, can simulate what the data is. Now the tool here, um, you know, if you've if you've done any inspection in, in parts manufacturing, you know, you you deal with a surface plate. A surface plate is a granite plate that's that's certified to be smooth and and flat, you know, within certain tolerance limits. Okay, and and that's what we use for inspection of parts. And so essentially, in this case, our datum, our datum feature is this plane of the part. It's a, it's a lower surface. Okay, and to simulate that datum, we will take this part and we will set it on a granite plate or something else that simulates that flat datum. So this is a tool surface. It's a granite plate, for instance, in, in a lot of inspection um, endeavors, in, in, in which case it simulates the datum. And you simulate that datum by press, putting this part onto that datum simulator and really a plane like this is going to touch at three points. So simulating datum is established by the datum feature simulator. In this case it's a granite plate. Datum simulators provide a surface, an axis, or a point from which measurements can be made. Okay, so so really it, it establishes how you're going to set the part up to measure the part. Um, let's talk about datum reference frames. Okay, so so a datum reference plane. In this case, there's other ways to do it, but we'll talk about this one. It's it's the simplest to comprehend up front. But a datum reference frame is made in this case made of three theoretically perfect mutually perpendicular planes. Okay, these planes locate the axes x, y, and z that form a coordinate system, and the perfect frame located by imperfect datum features. Okay, so what we have here is we have a part. Okay, we have three datums called out on this part. We have datum A here. Okay, that's the largest surface on the part. We have datum B here. It's the second largest surface on the part. And then we got datum C here. That's the, the third largest surface on the part. And, and, and what happens is we have all of these, um, all of those datums are referenced in this feature control frame for a positional tolerance of these two holes. Okay, so, so essentially what that means is these two holes are located with respect to the datums. And we can see this here. We can see it here, like from datum B, the holes are located 0.338 away from datum B. Okay, so, so that is establishing the location of those holes. Um, this dimension here, 0 0.2, it's a basic dimension, it establishes the location of the holes with respect to datum C. And then all three of those datums show up here, um, A, B, and C, A being the primary. And, and, and this makes sense because datum A being the primary is the largest surface. So when we go to set our part up on this datum reference frame to check these hole positions, what we do is we have a simulator here for datum A, which is the lower surface of the part. We also have a plane B. It simulates um, plane B, okay, in which case it's mutually perpendicular to plane A, and, and then we would have the part touching that. And then we have another datum plane here, plane C. Again, it's mutually perpendicular to both datum plane B and datum plane A, and it would also touch the physical part as well. So we set up a frame like this so we can measure the exact location of these holes here with respect to that datum axis. We're going to talk a little bit about degrees of freedom. Um, I'm going to try to m mingle that in, but that's it's more like a tool design term, but we're going to talk about those as we go on. Um, datum precedence. Okay, now this is very important. This is, this is the order in which the datums are referenced in the feature control frame. Um, you know, so the order in which the datums appear in the feature control frame, the letters used do not determine precedence. The tolerance determines the precedence. So in this case, you know, alphabetic order doesn't matter here. Um, we're going to set these up by what is a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary datum. Now, in, in this example right here, I said the primary datum was the largest surface, and that, and that tracks. That makes sense. And then the secondary datum here is the second largest surface. And then the datum C here is the smallest surface. So we made this decision to 
um, set these datums up in this order, A, B, and C. And, and really, A for the primary datum really orients the part with respect to, um, you know, how the part's made. So in which case, um, you know, I'm going to set the part on datum A here. And that's also where these holes will, will actually, you know, penetrate that surface of datum A. Um, you know, it's like when I'm drilling these holes here, I will be, will be setting my part on datum A while I put those in. So that's why A is a very important um, primary datum for this. Now I'm going to pick this up in the next movie. Thank you.